You should be ashamed. Calling yourself a community that cares. Oh, but we do care, Nicholas. It's all about the greater good. The greater good. How can this be for the greater good? The greater good. In the 2007 film Hot Fuzz, London police officer Nicholas Angel is transferred to the village of Sanford. There, he is partnered with Danny Butterman, son of Inspector Frank Butterman. A series of strange accidents happen, all resulting in the gruesome deaths of the locals. Nicholas believes these deaths are connected and are no accidents, a theory pushed back by the rest of the police. After initially coming up short in his investigation, Nicholas discovers a secret cabal made up of the Neighborhood Watch Alliance, who have been quietly murdering people in town for what they believe is the greater good of Sanford. Every year, the village is judged to be the best and wins an award for being the top village in terms of quality of life. The Neighborhood Watch Alliance believes that in order to maintain this status, those who do not fit in with their perception of what Sanford must be need to die. Nicholas and Danny fight back against the Cabal, guns ablazing, and restore normalcy to the village. In this film, we witness a conflict between two normative ethics theories. These are systems that serve to articulate and advocate an ethical code or to provide justifiable and reliable principles to determine what is moral behavior. Throughout the film, townspeople use the term the greater good, a term which is also used in the ethical philosophy of utilitarianism. In concept, utilitarianism is the belief that society should try to maximize good. The morally right action is always the one that produces the most good. This theory is a branch of the normative ethics theory of consequentialism, meaning the right action is understood in terms of the consequences it produces rather than its good intentions. Utilitarianism specifically is more about the scope of the consequences. A utilitarian view is that we should maximize the overall good for society, not just one's own good. And that sounds rather incontrovertible, right? Superficially, utilitarianism sounds like a no-brainer. Of course we should try to maximize good in society. What is the alternative? Maximizing bad? Minimizing good? But, if utilitarianism, or ethics philosophy in general, were that simple and obvious, we would all be living in some kind of utopia right now, instead of our waking nightmare hellscape where every news story is worse than the one that preceded it. But utilitarianism, like most any other approach to normative ethics in philosophy, has some problems, and Hot Fuzz illustrates some of them quite well. Early consequentialists defined good as pleasure or happiness. A kind of proto-utilitarianism called hedonism was developed by ancient philosopher Epicurus. He believed that one could determine the rightness of an action based on whether said action brought pleasure or pain to the person performing that action. We must exercise ourselves in the things which bring happiness, since, if that be present, we have everything, and if that be absent, all our actions are directed toward attaining it. When the cabal of the neighborhood watch and others in hot fuzz plot the murders of townspeople because doing so will relieve their pain caused by the objectionable townspeople and increase their pleasure, they are performing the most selfish form of hedonism. Actions that serve to maximize good purely for oneself fall into the realm of egoism. Epicurus would strongly disagree with these actions based on his writings about what it means to have a full and pleasurable life, but not everyone reads the fine print in your normative ethics theory. Utilitarianism, an outgrowth of this, aims to serve the greatest utility for society, not the individual. 19th century philosopher John Stuart Mill once said, The creed which accepts as the foundation of morals, utility, or the greatest happiness principle holds that actions are right in proportion as they tend to promote happiness, wrong as they tend to promote the reverse of happiness. By happiness is intended pleasure and the absence of pain. By unhappiness pain and the privation of pleasure. Utilitarianism is opposed to egoist philosophy, citing the fact that while hedonism is ancient, utilitarianism is comparatively modern, and they are not one and the same. And that is true, 
However, their comparative nature can create misuse of hedonism under the banner of utilitarianism, and any good utilitarian may have to agree with this because they believe that the intent of something is far less important than its consequences. But what is good to a utilitarian? Epicurus said pleasure, yes, but a more agreeable and less selfish way of stating that is happiness. We all want happiness, right? Look at this guy eating ice cream. Now that's happiness. See, happiness is something that can be called an intrinsic good because it is a good in and of itself. A counter to this idea is that utilitarianism reduces the subtleties of life to calculation of animal-like pleasures with no concern for how these pleasures are produced. The townspeople think their lives are good, but only because of something terrible that is happening in the background of Sanford. Someone once said that because of this, utilitarianism is a doctrine only worthy of swine. Now utilitarians would disagree and remind us that utilitarianism is not about maximizing only personal pleasure, but maximizing pleasure for everyone for society. Utilitarianism in concept is not egoism, and society claims to operate this way. But as we see in Hot Fuzz, it doesn't always work out quite that way in practice. And remember, how it works in practice is important to utilitarian thought. The Cabal believes what it is doing is for the greater good of Sanford. These murders, they believe, help keep the crime rate down and keep Sanford as the most famous best village, which helps their image and therefore helps commerce. But this is a falsehood. As Nicholas explains in one scene, these murders made out to look like accidents keep the public crime rate down, but only because the murders are never documented as such. Nicholas says that the murders are still happening and these so-called accidents are no less gruesome and tragic if they have been thought of as murders in the first place. Consequences, not intent. Utilitarianism justifies moral wrongs for the greater good, but this also means that utilitarianism can ignore justice. A classic criticism of utilitarianism was given by H.J. McCloskey. If framing an innocent person for a crime that would reduce further riots and pain that looking for the real guilty person would incur, utilitarian theory would suggest that this would be morally correct, as although an innocent man will suffer, for the greater number of people, less pain will be caused, creating a calculation of more pleasure overall. In other words, if the sole aim of utilitarian theory is to maximize pleasure and reduce pain for the greater number, justice can and will be ignored. To use the film as an example, the cabal killing Nicholas would cause great pain for the police officer, of course, but that's only one man, and it would cause great pleasure for the cabal. If they did not kill Nicholas, they would all be arrested and spend their lives in prison. This could be calculated as a net loss in pleasure and net gain in pain, and thereby justified under utilitarianism. The hooded figures claim to only be looking out for the greater good of Sanford, but their decisions are terribly... human, meaning flawed. There is an impracticality toward calculating the utility or overall goodness in real time, not to mention predictive calculations. Plus, do you really trust this guy to calculate what is good for everyone? I mean, just look at this guy. Anyway, there is a lot of historical precedent for dangerous utilitarian greater good policies in action, such as an early American support for eugenics and forced sterilization and Japanese internment camps during World War II. These are the more hyperbolic examples, of course, but any policy that devalues people to serve what the ruling party believes is best for the majority is an example of utilitarian philosophy in action. The secret society in Sanford has a particular disdain for Irish travelers or Romani. The Cabal believes that their inclusion in their village is a net loss for people in general and under utilitarian standards, the mild discomfort and inconvenience of the wider population takes priority over people who are in desperate need of help. 
The challenge of applying utilitarianism into the real world is that for someone to take on the principle of greatest happiness for greatest number, every action an individual performs requires one to behave impartially. This sounds sensible except that people are often not capable or willing to do that. Making calls for the greater good a smokescreen to do something less good. So if Hot Fuzz, within the text of the film, rejects utilitarianism, what is it endorsing instead? Well, one could argue that it is propping up Kantianism instead. That is to say, ethics as proposed by 18th century philosopher Immanuel Kant. Unlike utilitarian philosophers, Kant believed that certain actions such as murder, theft, and even lying were absolutely prohibited. Kantians ask themselves if they can rationally will that everyone act as they propose to act. If the answer is no, then they must not perform the action. They ask if their actions respect the goals of human beings rather than merely using them for their own purposes. Once again, if the answer is no, then they must not perform that action. Nicholas Angel is our Kantian hero in the film. He explicitly says that he knows the difference between right and wrong. He always follows a strict code. He cannot disobey this code. Remember, utilitarianism can ignore justice, but Nicholas is the avatar of justice. As his ex-girlfriend says, he cannot turn it off. The film frames Nicholas as right and the neighborhood watch as wrong, because in this case their wrongness is rather plain to see, but that does not mean that Kantian ethics are infallible. Kantians believe that they must follow their code, their laws, even in cases where following said code would bring about more unhappiness and even harm than the alternative. Believing in the code more than the consequences can lead to harsh rule in society. One character, for example, calls Nicholas a fascist. Normative systems of ethics are challenging because they must account for the totality of existence, every conceivable possibility, and be applied by imperfect humans. Kantian ethics are particularly challenging due to their black and white nature, but that is a topic for another episode. Hi everyone, if you like what I do, please click on the orange Patreon link below. That's how this show happens. It's also the only way to request an episode. Also, please like, share, subscribe, and click on the notification bell so that you never miss an episode. I'll see you next week.